Okay then gang, so Bootstrap 5 provides us with an increased amount of utility classes to change things like position, spacing, shadow, border, border radius, font weight, etc. on any elements. And you can find a full list of all of the utility classes right here on the utilities section of the docs. And in fact, we've already seen a couple of them in action for the font colors and the font weight. Let's take a look at a few more examples in our page. Okay, so there's a few different utility classes I want to show you. So I've split this page up into sections. First of all, we'll look at margin and padding, then borders, then box shadow, and then finally font weight. And this is not going to be a full set of utility classes I'm going to show you here. I'm just kind of introducing you to them. There are more, but we will probably use more of them that are not here in the future, in the rest of this series. All right then, so let's start off with margin and padding. And these are the ones that I probably use most often, just to give a bit of extra spacing to the elements. So let's start with a div, and I'm gonna give this a few classes. First of all, I'll say bg-primary, just to give this a background color. And we'll come back to the classes in a second. Then I'm gonna say small, margin, and padding. So the way we add margin and padding is by using very simple classes. For margin, we just say M and then hyphen whatever strength we want to use. And that strength can be one to five. So if I say one, then it's a small margin. If I say five, it's a large margin. So let me say M1 first of all. And if I go over here, you can see this very small space around this blue box. If I inspect the element, we can see down here, the margin is 0.25 rems. So that is the M1 class. Now, if I change this to M2, we're gonna see this increase. Let me show you now, it's 0.5 rems. So it doubles that margin and we can see that. If I go to something like M5 and save this, then we can see it's got a much bigger margin. Now it's three rem, all right? So it goes from one to five. The same is true for the padding. Let's change this back to M1 and we'll do P hyphen one as well. And by the way, this applies margin and padding in all directions, top, right, bottom, left. So if I save this now, we'll see the padding inside the blue box. And again, that's 0.25 rems for P1. All right, so let me duplicate this just so we can compare it to M5 and P5 as well. So let's do that, and in here we'll say large, margin, and padding. Save that, and we can see the difference between these two things. All right then. So let's do some more examples. I'm gonna do another div down here, and give it a class again of bg-primary. And what I'm gonna do is say margin in y direction, padding in x direction. So remember, Y is the up and down direction, X is the left and right direction. So what I wanna do is only apply a margin in the Y direction, top and bottom. And to do that, I can say M, Y, and then the strength. So M, Y hyphen one would be a small margin, top and bottom. Let's do something like three, which is kind of the medium ground. And also I wanna apply padding in the X direction, just going left and right. And to do that, I can say PX hyphen, and then whatever strength, which is gonna be five so if we save this and preview we can see now we get a lot of padding left to right but no margin but we do get the margin top and bottom all right cool so let's do one more example for this i'm going to create a div down here again i'm going to give this a bg hyphen primary color and then inside i'll say margin and padding for each direction so what if we want to apply padding and margin to each direction separately. For example, I might only want to apply a margin top, or it could be that the margin top is different from the margin bottom and the margin right. Well, all we do is use a series of different classes. For margin top, it would be MT, and then hyphen the strength, for example, three. For margin bottom, MB, hyphen four for the strength. And then if we want it to the left and right, we don't say ML or MR, instead we say MS, which is margin start for the left, and we could apply something to that, or ME for margin end, which is to the right, and we could apply strength to that. I'm not gonna do that, I'm gonna apply that to the padding instead. So I'll say PS for padding start, and that's gonna be five, 
and then I'll say PT for padding top, which is going to be four, PE, which is the end to the right, two, and then PB, which is the bottom, we'll just say one. All right, so now if we save this, we can see that the padding and the margin is going to be different in each direction. In fact, let's do margin start as well as five, and we'll say margin end as one just to apply margin on the left and right that's different as well. So we have a tiny margin over here on the right and a bigger margin on the left. So these are really useful utility classes for adding margin and padding to any element. All right then, so let's move on to borders. So then I'm gonna come down here and do a div with a class of margin hyphen three, so all directions, just to give this div some space around it and also p hyphen three to give it some space inside and also I'm gonna give it a class of border and we'll just say default border for the text. So if we save this, we can see now we get this light gray border around this div. So that's just by applying this one class right here. We get that little border. We can also customize this. So I could say div and then again, we'll say M hyphen three and also P hyphen three to apply the margin and padding. Then I just want to apply border to the top. So border hyphen top this time. And also I want to apply border to the right as well. So I can say border end for that. So we'll say individual borders. And this could be as well border bottom and border start. If we save this, we can see the top and the end over here. All right then. So let's do another example. We'll say div m hyphen three, also p hyphen three. And then this time border hyphen start, have it at the start. And also I'm going to colorize this border hyphen success. So I can use any of those theme colors to colorize the border as well. So inside here, we'll say border success color at start, save it and preview over here. And we can see the green color just on the left for the border. All right. So let's do some more examples down here, div dot m hyphen three dot p hyphen three and then i'll say border start again border danger this time so it's the red color and also i want to make it thicker and i can do that i can say border hyphen and then a strength one to five so five would be the thickest one would be the thinnest so let's do oops i've made a complete error right here let me get rid of all these and carry on with this so border hyphen danger and then dot border hyphen five tab that's better and in here we'll say thicker border save it and preview and we can see that nice thick red border on the left all right so let's make now maybe a rounded border so we'll say div dot m hyphen three dot p hyphen three again and then this time i'm going to say rounded oops rounded if I can spell it, then border, then border hyphen five. So what we're saying here is apply a border. This is a rounded element and a thickness of five. So pretty thick. So rounded corners right here. Save that and preview. And we can see rounded corners around the edge of the border. Let's do one more example. I'm going to say div dot m hyphen three dot p hyphen three dot rounded hyphen pill. We'll see the difference in a second border and then border hyphen five and rounded pill corners. Save that. And if we take a look at this, you're going to notice it's much more rounded now at the left and right. So it makes it into that kind of pill shape. And that's this class right here, rounded pill. And by the way, that's not just for borders. You don't have to have a border. We could take this off and just give it a background color. For example, I could say BG hyphen primary like this, and it would still be rounded. It's just that we have the border. The border gets that rounded effect as well. Okay. All right. So that's borders. Let's take a look now at box shadow. So I'm going to say div. I'm also going to apply M hyphen three P hyphen three to this. Then I'm going to use a shadow hyphen small so that's a small box shadow so elements with small box shadow like so save it and preview you might just be able to see this box shadow if you zoom in i can see it right there let's do a larger one so let me copy that 
and I'm going to change this to LG and change this to large save that and preview and we can see a much larger box shadow down here it kind of sticks out from the page a bit more and if we just take off that it's kind of like a medium shadow so if we preview that we can see a medium shadow now all right so that's about it for box shadow pretty simple next i want to show you font weight now we've already seen one of these for bold text and it looks something like this p.fw hyphen bold so font weight hyphen bold and that would be bold text i'm also going to do some other examples so let me duplicate these a couple of times so we've got bold and then i'll say bolder which is bolder than bold then we'll just have some normal text so let me change this to normal so no classes just so we can compare it i'll change this to bolder as well then after that we'll do a light variation and um, we'll change this to light then we'll say font style instead of font weight and this is going to be italic like so and we'll do one more and we'll say font style italic and also apply a font weight of light so we can double up on those things we can have font weight and font style so let's change these italic and then down here italic light text all right so let's preview scroll down here bold text bolder text normal light italic and italic light so i know that might have been a bit boring but i just wanted to show you all of these different utility classes available to us that we can add to elements to apply these different styles and they are really useful when we want to customize the look of the components a bit more and like i said there are a lot more utility classes available i've just kind of scratched the surface so definitely check out all of these utility classes in these different sections and we will probably be using more of them as we go forward through the rest of this course